old NVIDIA graphic cards. GeForce GTS 2, GeForce 4 MX440 from my last video. And here is a TNT 2, a Diamond Viper V770. The problem is, two of them have artifacts. This is the GeForce 4 MX440. This was already on my channel. This one works. We upgraded the memory from 64 to 128 megabytes. And as a nice side effect, we doubled the data bus from 64 bits to 128 bits. These two cards generate artifacts. And it is not easy to figure out what is at fault if you don't see any physical damage on the PCB or any of the components on the card. For Voodoo 1 and Voodoo 2 cards, you have a simple MS-DOS utility called Mojo that can at least point you in the right direction, what might be at fault. Here is something I just recently learned. There is something like Mojo for NVIDIA cards supporting models from the GeForce 256 up to the FX5000 series. So unfortunately, our Diamond Viper V770 is not included, and that is why we will not cover this card in today's video. But this one is a GeForce 2 GTS, and it does have artifacts. Today, we will try to figure out which of these chips is faulty, at least I hope I will be able to figure this out, by using a tool called MATS, the Memory Automated Test System. It usually comes together with another tool called MODS, the Modular Diagnostic Software, and there is even a nice documentation provided. It gives you some basics, but it's definitely a good starting point to read more about these NVIDIA diagnostic utilities. But today we'll focus on MATS. It comes on a floppy disk image, so all you have to do is to write this image back to a floppy disk or an emulated floppy drive if you have a GoTek device, and then hopefully we'll figure out what is wrong with our graphics card. On Vogons, you will find some threads where users post their success stories, debugging their GeForce cards. Having access to such tools allows you to narrow down the issue and probably save you a lot of time and guesswork. And if you look hard enough, you will even find a copy of Mats and Mods. And that's great because that allows many of us to keep these cards alive for much longer. Or repair them, what we're trying to do today. So if you have artifacts on your card, then there are technically three possibilities that could be at fault. First, it could be one or many faulty memory chips. In this case, I have only four memory chips because the back is not populated with memory chips. So it could be that one or more of those memory chips is faulty. Second, it could be the GPU itself. So maybe we have a faulty memory controller or there's another issue inside the chip. This is then technically not fixable unless you swap the GPU. And third, it is a connection, a sort of connection between the GPU and the memory chip. This could be just a broken solder ball. It could be a lifted pad. It could be a broken SMD component, something that hinders the GPU to communicate with the memory chip. And here we see how bad the artifacts look like. It's interesting that we have straight lines of exclamation marks. Let's go to the BIOS quickly. Yeah, so you have the same thing here. We just get exclamation marks and the image is not very bright. I'm not sure if this is also a memory issue or we have something else on the card. But yeah, this is how my card looks like. Let's see how automatically everything is going to be debugged. And we are starting MS-DOS 7.1. Here we have a nice blank screen with only exclamation marks. And yeah, things get really hard to read. And here is our test. Now this screen is going to flash, so I will skip this until we get the results. And here we go, here is our output. So we can see here that our GeForce 2 was tested from zero to 32 megabytes. Here on this line, we have many, many errors. All the others seem to be okay. Now, here's the thing. We have four memory chips. So I'm assuming this is a representation of each memory chip. So we have three working ones and one that's faulty. Now, of course, that could be also something else. Maybe it's not the memory chip. Maybe it's the GPU. Maybe it's a connection to our memory chip. And we need to figure out today what it is. But yeah, let's just figure out which memory chip is at fault. And then... Maybe we'll even swap them and see if the issues migrate to a different location 
that would mean that the memory chip definitely is an issue and not our GPU or any connection, trace, SMD component or whatsoever. The first thing we have to do is to look at our memory. And the memory that is on this card is the K4D62323HA, a Samsung memory chip, 64 Mbit DDR SD RAM. And here is the memory organization. And here we can see the pinout of our chip. So you see all these data pins here, 30, 31. I think we start at dq0 so here we go so we go all the way and these are all distributed around the entire chip so we have 32 data pins in total maybe we can identify a specific memory chip by shorting signals basically creating more or different memory errors that we can then attribute to a specific memory chip the main requirement is that the signal has to be unique to a memory chip and unfortunately, I think all the signals that we have for controlling the chip, like CAS, RAS, chip select, I think is also enabled for all four memory chips. That would also not work. And the same goes for the address lines. Address lines are not unique per chip. The only thing that is left are data lines. So for us to introduce more memory errors and hopefully identify a chip, we have to mess with the data lines. And I will just pick these ones, these two, pin 83 and 84, DQ30 and DQ31. And hopefully we'll see an output in maths that helps us to identify the physical chip and link it to the output we get from the memory test. And this should help us now to identify which chip this is. Before we dive into testing this card, I want to give a huge shout out to today's video sponsor and long-term supporter of this channel, PCBWay. Thanks to their expertise, we've brought some epic retro tech projects to life, like the 3DFX memory expansion board, voltage regulators, memory modules, wavetable boards, and Sound Blaster memory upgrades for the R64. The best part? All those designs are on PCBWay's shared project space, so you can easily order and assemble them yourself. They are also still running the purple color promotion with no extra charge for that stylish upgrade. Get premium, vibrant purple PCBs at the exact same price as the standard green ones. Whether you're a hobbyist or you're a pro, PCBWay has the tools to turn your wildest ideas into reality. From PCBs to 3D printing, to CNC machining and sheet metal fabrication. So head over to PCBWay.com today and start creating. Links are in the description below. Thanks again PCBWay for making this possible. And we do get a picture. Oh, and it looks different. But let's see what Mats has to say. Oh, now we have a different problem. Now the card is running at 16 megabytes instead of 32. I'm discovering so many things that I didn't plan on doing today. And yeah, tested from 0 megabytes to 16 megabytes. So that is a bit unfortunate because, well, we lost half the memory chips. So that is interesting. So this card now should operate at 16 megabytes, but instead of 128, we are operating at 64 bits by shorting these two data pins. So it looks like our faulty chip is still active and working. Could that mean that the one we shorted right now is a good chip? And the second one that disappeared as well also must be a working chip. So let's move on and short the two pins of the next chip, undoing the first one, obviously. And then let's see which chips are appearing. Just if you wonder which pins I'm shorting. So it's DQ30 and DQ31. There we go. So this is now the second chip. So here's our GPU. Here is the first memory chip. Then here's the second one. And then we go in the corner and this is the third and the fourth one. So yeah, let's see what we get now with this sort of blob in place. And we still get the exclamation marks. Anyway, let's see what Mats has to say. Oh, and now we get 32 megabytes again. That is interesting. So the memory chip on a graphics card to the right, on the top row, is the third line on this output. So this memory chip is line number three in our mat output. Okay, so the blob is gone. 
Now let's move on to the next memory chip. It probably doesn't matter which data pins you're shorting. It doesn't matter if it's a lower value or higher value. It may not even be connected to the GPU in that specific order. It's connected probably how the traces go to the GPU and what's easier to connect and implement on the PCB. There we go. So this is now our next memory chip. This is the first one that is on the top. Here's our GPU. So on the top right corner, here is our memory chip. And we still have our exclamation marks, but now we have a red energy star logo. And we definitely have line number two for our chip in question, right? I think we can all agree on this. Whatever we blobbed together is line number two. Great. I think we're making progress. Line number two. So now we only have one chip left. We never got rid of our exclamation marks. That's a little bit worrisome, to be honest, because, well, we have only one chance left. Okay, so now solder blob removed. Now we need to connect these two together. Yeah, let's leave it. Okay, so now we have a blob on. U302. And we still have our exclamation marks, but our logo is no longer red, the energy star logo. I mean, the pattern would be that this chip should correspond to line number one. We get no errors on the other one. So I think we identified our chip. This chip that we modified right now is on line number one on our output. That means the first chip that we tested must be line number four. It just decided to completely not detect the chip at all. We got more errors, but that means the faulty memory chip is the one that has the solder blob right now. Okay, so this one here is line number one, two, three. Then this one here must be line number four. So what I'm expecting now, this chip is our faulty one. Can we remove this chip and see what happens? I have so many SMD components around this chip, so I'm trying to use a suction tool to get that chip off. Wow, I didn't move any components. I'm fully expecting that this is the memory chip that causes these exclamation marks. If the chip is no longer there, either we don't have any output right now, or we get an output, and then I expect that this graphics card doesn't show any artifacts. Okay, now we should find out quite a bit how this graphics card works. If it runs on a 64-bit data bus, then we should get an output. Let's see what happens. Oh, these are exactly the same lines that had the exclamation marks before, but now it's just bars. So it looks like it does somehow work, but it cannot function properly. So yeah, it could be that this is our chip. Now, the question obviously is, is it the memory chip or is there something else at fault? Because it doesn't necessarily have to be the memory chip. It could be a trace or it could be the GPU itself. We'll find out. So yeah, we do get errors for the memory chip because now it's no longer there. It is required to have this memory chip on the card. So what I want to do now is I want to swap one of the other memory chips, maybe the one that is on line number four into this position and see if we can get a clean output. Because before we had somehow a 16 megabyte card, for whatever reason, it decided to show 16 megabytes. I will move line number four to line number one. We have an empty spot then there, but we'll see what is going to happen with the output of this card.
Okay, memory chip is moved. Let's see if we get a completely different output from this graphics card. And yeah, we get an output and oh no, no, we still have exclamation marks. And now I feel like they have multiplied. Uh, that's not what I wanted to see. If we still get the errors on the same spot, then it's most likely a GPU issue and not a memory issue. And I do have a problem with this card because the heatsink is thermal epoxied to the GPU. It will not be easy to get this off. And it is not our memory chip because the memory errors didn't move. It may actually be a GPU issue. And if that's the case, well, then I guess my next video is me trying to remove the heatsink from this graphics card. If you have any ideas how to do that, let me know. It's thermal epoxy. It's not uh, tape or something like this. No, it's, it's like stone. Let me know in the comments. I'll put this one memory chip back now to get back hopefully 32 megabytes. But yeah, I think we will still have the memory errors, which means it is not our memory chip. We're back to square number one. And I have a feeling that we get exactly the same output that we got before. Yeah. Okay. So, I believe our memory chips are okay. I also believe that our traces and pads and everything on the card, on the PCB, are also okay. That means the problem is either the GPU itself or we have a cracked solder ball below the core. And that basically means we have to take off the graphics chip, reball it, and solder it back to the board, which is something... Well, I need to practice anyway, and I think this is a good candidate. I have the same graphics card twice. I have this card another time. I found them at the scrapyard next to each other. One came in this condition, and the other one is perfectly working. And now you can let me know if you knew that this tool existed for GeForce 256 up to the FX5000 lineup, or if this is something new to you. And this is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for watching. Also, a big thank you to all my Patreons and thanks to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye. <laughs>